lot of Marvel comic readers are aware of the Ultimate Universe, Earth 1610, created back in the year 2000. It had a pretty lengthy run with Marvel, set in a more true to life world and introducing cool versions of characters we already know, or introducing completely new ones like Miles Morales. Now, this world was pretty much destroyed in 2015 thanks to the Secret Wars event, but now, a new version of the Ultimate Universe has come into existence, Earth 6160 very different. This world was created by the evil version of Reed Richards called the Maker from the original Ultimate Universe who manipulated the world's history. In this alternate universe it was actually Howard Stark who became Iron Man and alongside Obadiah Stane headed Stark Industries and controlled North America. Now after learning that the world was controlled by a group of supervillains known as the Cabal, Howard turned on them imprisoning the Maker in a time machine called the Immortus Engine. Unfortunately this led to the presumed passing of Howard and so his son, Tony, carried on his footsteps as Iron Lad. In the alternate Earth of the Dark Ages story from 2021, when Earth became threatened by a massively powerful robotic being called the Unmaker, Tony Stark worked alongside with the world's other scientific geniuses to try and protect the Earth. Now, when Doctor Strange sacrificed himself to save the world, it created an EMP that brought down Iron Man's suit technology along with the technology of the rest of the world. This caused Tony to crash and lose part of his leg, but survive. Now, seven years later, society has rebuilt itself in a world with no electricity. But this is Iron Man. Tony found a way to create a suit that didn't require any electricity to work. Eventually, he began experimenting with alchemy, and while working away, he was recruited by Captain America to liberate Europe from the mutant apocalypse. But it turns out, Cap was actually Mystique in disguise, working with Apocalypse, who then captured and brainwashed Tony along with other geniuses to try and capture the power of the Unmaker. In the incredibly recent Avengers Twilight, the world is under the control of a totalitarian government after an event called H-Day when Ultron and the Red Hulk launched a brutal attack and wiped out most of the Avengers. Here, the son of Iron Man and the Wasp, James Jimmy Stark, inherited the Empire empire of Stark technology. Having grown up in a society where superheroes had been tarnished by public opinion and being raised by Kyle Jarvis, who was actually a villain in disguise, James's brilliant mind was used to create the surveillance system, Iron Man drones, the armor used by the corrupt police force and the army, as well as the new Avengers. Now eventually, James also makes his own powerful Iron Man armor and uses it to fight Steve Rogers and the other heroes as a pretty capable villain before eventually trying to his wrongs. In the world of Marvel Zombies, known as Earth 2149, Iron Man appears as one of the uninfected heroes in the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier where Nick Fury and other survivors try to plan to save Earth from the virus. Unfortunately, they are attacked and Iron Man is infected and joins the infected zombies. He is among the zombified population left on the Earth to see the Silver Surfer arrive, heralding the arrival of Galactus. These remaining zombies attack Silver Surfer and Iron Man loses his bottom half during the fight. But after Silver Surfer is subdued, Iron Man becomes one of the few to feast on the Silver Surfer and gain a portion of the Surfer's powers, allowing him to fly again. He then thinks of making a machine to combine all all the zombies new cosmic powers to unleash against Galactus. Iron Man along with the Hulk and Giant Man build the machine and finally bring him down, but then it's a brawl between different factions of zombies to see who gets to eat Galactus. The heroes easily win and they feed on Galactus gaining his power. These zombies become the Zombie Galacti, returning to Earth after 40 years of consuming the entire universe, only to find out that there are still survivors on Earth. Eventually, Giant Man realizes that the hunger has actually disappeared for the zombies and they agree to stop attacking and spare their survivors. Unfortunately, the Hulk still had quite the appetite and he wiped out Iron Man among many others. It seems that being Iron Man runs in the Stark family, and so the Iron Man of the year 2093 is one Andro Stark, a descendant of the Stark line and a direct descendant of Arno Stark. Now, sometime in the future it seems that Iron Man's tech becomes outlawed, but like a true Stark, this does not stop Andros from resurrecting it and using it for his own gains. Yes, Andros is more of a villain. 
Teaming up with Victor Von Doom, he has set up a weapons platform in Earth's orbit and plans to eliminate the population if their demands are not met. In the present day, a reborn preteen King Arthur, as random as that sounds, orders Merlin to bring the Tony Stark and Doctor Doom of the present to 2093 to save Camelot. Now, when Tony attacks the satellite, he comes face to face with his descendant. Andros. Andros' armor is obviously more sophisticated than Tony's due to the future where it comes from, and Andros makes quick work of Tony. But when Tony comes back for round two, wielding the blade Excalibur, which is just an awesome sentence, Andros can't handle the smoke. He's defeated. He, get, he gets defeated. Now, one of the stranger alternate Iron Mans comes from an equally strange alternate world. Coming to us in Secret Wars 2, as in T O O, not, not the number 2 from 2015, is the Battleworld Domain number 615. Here, every inhabitant of the world is basically Uncle Ben. They all have Uncle Ben's face at the very least. All the women, all the children, Everyone. Yes, even Iron Man was just another version of Ben Parker. This Iron Man was a member of the Avengers, alongside Uncle Ben versions of Captain America, Thor, Black Widow, Hawkeye, and Demolition Man. They attacked the Heralds of Galactus of Hell's Kitchen's Kitchen Domain, who sought to steal the ultimate Wi Fi, but were tragically defeated by them. Boo. Back in 2008, Marvel put out various stories with the title The End that showed off the last days of various different heroes, and of course, Iron Man got his own story. This version of Tony would go on to marry Bethany Cabe. Now, 50 years into the future, thanks to being Iron Man for so long, Tony began suffering nerve damage and suffering from tremors. He began to focus pretty heavily on the world's first space elevator, and during the initial construction of which, he almost failed to save a worker and a submarine and he started to question his ongoing effectiveness as Iron Man. Now, After a defeat at the hands of Ultra Dynamo, Tony chose a replacement in the form of Nicholas Travis. Tony was a pretty tough mentor though, and the two had a bit of a falling out before Ultra Dynamo came back for round two, almost taking Tony's life before Nicholas jumped in and saved the day. Now, With Nick becoming the new Iron Man, Tony and Beth used the space elevator to retire on a space station. which is actually probably the most positive of the end stories that I've read, so just be warned, they're dark. In the far-flung future of the year 3030, the role of Iron Man has fallen to another descendant of Tony Stark named Rhodey Stark. She appeared in Avengers Volume 5, number 24, in December of 2013, traveling back in time to the modern day to warn the Avengers about a rogue planet pulled from its orbit and on a collision course with the Earth. She has one of the cooler looking Iron Man suits that I have ever seen, with much of the same abilities, but added ones as well, like being able to create duplicates of herself. In general, I really hope we get to see more of her character at some point, but it's really hard to say. While she stated that the Avengers would have been able to deal with the rogue planet without her, which they handled by phasing the whole rogue planet, allowing it to coexist with the Earth and saving both worlds at the same time, she actually came to warn Tony that apparently soon everyone he knew would be trying to take him down. After that little ominous foreshadowing, she then faded back into her own timeline, which is super convenient. This next alternate version of Iron Man first appears in Bullet Points number one, but as a bit of a twist, this is actually Steve Rogers. After Dr. Erskine was assassinated, the Super Soldier Serum program had to be scrapped, and Steve Rogers, still wanting to serve his country, agreed to join a program that saw him medically grafted to a giant suit of Iron Man armor. This suit resembled the first few iterations of the rough and heavy looking Iron Man armor with many of its capabilities. The suit, however, took a huge toll on Steve, who even went through rigorous stamina and strength training just to wear it. Unfortunately, Steve was eventually taken down in the suit when he was sent on a mission to subdue the Hulk, who in this timeline was actually Peter Parker. As you can probably tell, Bullet Points is really interesting, serving up alternate versions of characters in very interesting ways. Check it out if you have the chance, because the art is also pretty amazing. And lastly today, one of the fun things about Tony is that he can very easily be turned into an incredibly ruthless and capable villain. There are a few evil versions of Iron Man, but my favorite one is from Exiles issue 23. This Iron Man brought the whole world to its knees, but had the intelligence to not let them know it, and then the world begged him to take control. This incredibly evil Iron Man from Earth 42777 concocted a massive plan. Tony acquired every world conglomerate, he organized a mutant war against humanity and defeated their leader, Magneto, who he secretly actually 
supported in order to be held up as a savior. He then created a worldwide famine the likes of which has never been seen before and then invented the cures and vaccines to fix it all. All of that to help him get elected president. He then developed weather controlling technologies to cause biblical level natural disasters in Europe and Asia, having them beg for help to the point of giving up their control to Tony. Central America and our very own Canada had economic down spirals that brought them under Tony's control, and then Tony made a deal with Dr. Doom to attack the capital and take out all the other leaders in America. Then Tony turned on Dr. Doom too, receiving a blast to the face that left him disfigured as he took the life of the Latvian ruler. He's even managed to defeat the Hulk. He is a scary dude. So with that, my name is Adam Andrews. As always, I will catch you guys on the flippy flop. Stay safe, keep positive, and peace out, you nerds.